Hello, Pray and Share Warriors, and Merry Christmas Eve. I hope you are having an awesome, awesome time with family. My cat is not here. Beth is in there watching a VeggieTales Christmas movie. I just wanted to get on here and um, probably won't be on here for very long because it is Christmas Eve and I have some things that I need to do. Uh, Ricky went to our Christmas Eve uh, church uh, service and I, I mean Christmas Eve is a time when I get Christmas together. I've got a lot done already which I'm very excited about. There's still some last minute things that I need to do tonight to make Christmas happen. Like I explained the other night, God supplies the money and um, I'm the one that brings it in. <laughs> anyway, I tried to get us things that we needed this year and not a bunch of stuff that we don't need, that we don't have a place to put. So I think it'll be good. So I hope you're having an awesome Christmas Eve and I hope that you are ready to have an awesome Christmas tomorrow. Celebrating the birth of Jesus. I really don't know whether tomorrow is his birthday or not. But it is a day that we all set aside to celebrate. We need to celebrate Jesus every day though. Not just one day out of the year. So, I'm going to read... Um, read that one. I'm going to read um, Prepare Your Heart for the celebration of my birth. So I'm going to read this and then I'm going to read the Christmas story in Luke. I think it's Luke 2. I would read the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew but it is really hard to say all those names so I'm going to spare you from that. But if you want to read it, it is so neat because all the names in the, Ute in the Old Testament are tied to Jesus' lineage. A lot of the main characters in the Old Testament are in the lineage of Jesus through Joseph, through the dad. Okay, so... We are going to pray. I'm listening to Christian music, Christian Christmas music, while I do this. Again, my name is Charm. This is my um, ministry site, Awesome Treasures Ministry. Not because I'm awesome, but because God thinks that we are all his awesome treasures. In his eyes, we are all his awesome treasures. And he wants more and more people, more and more of the people that he created to come into his kingdom. So that is why I come on here to share the truth, God's truth, to share God's truth, not mine. Not what I think the truth is, what God's truth is in his word, in this word. In God's word and to share the gospel to share the gospel message with somebody that might be seeking salvation through Jesus so let's go ahead and pray God we just thank you we thank you for today we thank you for this beautiful weather that you've given us yeah there's not snow on the ground but it, it has been beautiful days God so thank you for that God, we thank you that you are in control and you are on the throne, on your throne, God. You are the great I am. You are the great Jehovah. You are from everlasting to everlasting. And you have always been, God, and you will always be. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for being our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm, our sustainer. 
thank you for being our strength and our refuge. God, you are mighty and magnificent and powerful. There is no God like you. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness by your truth in your word. But you are loving and caring and compassionate and kind, God. And you are faithful and trustworthy and patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they would be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray for them to remember the relationship that they once had with you to return, to repent, and to be reconciled. God, we pray for all the disastrous things that have happened over the past few months. We just pray for the people that have lost loved ones, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We pray for healing for them. We pray for the people that have been injured in just countless things that have happened, God. We pray for healing for them, and we pray for strength for their families. We pray for other people that have lost loved ones, either to illness or old age or just different things, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. I know that this, uh, the holidays is harder on people that have lost loved ones. So, God, we just pray that they would feel your presence in the, in the absence of their loved one. God, we pray for healing. I know many people that are sick right now. We just pray for healing for them. We just pray for strength. We just pray that um, you would just help them to feel better. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, praying share warriors. Let's read the Christmas story, okay? This story is what Christmas is about. Off the story in Luke best. I know there are other accounts and other gospels. I really like Luke 2, this story. I like it with the angels and everything. So I'm going to start at the very beginning and I'm not going to read all of Luke 2. Because it talks about when Jesus is older and when his parents take him to the temple and everything. I'm just mostly going to read the um, the birth story of Jesus. Okay. And when my daughter was younger and when we lived... When I was a single mom, I would read this every Christmas morning, and I've kind of gotten out of the habit of doing it, but I'm going to take my Bible in my living room, and I'm going to try to remember to do it tomorrow, because I, there's just something that just brings it all back to where it's supposed to be, which is about Jesus. Okay, I'm going to read it. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while, the, while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea. To the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David. So I told you that he is, Joseph is in the lineage that starts with Abraham and goes all the way through David and down to Joseph's family. So Joseph is part of David's lineage to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife 
who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And I watched Chris, Christian <laughs> Christmas concerts today. And one of them that I watched was um, Casting Crowns. And he, he talked about, you know, the innkeeper that, you know, we get the idea that the innkeeper is just rude. But he he brought up a point. Maybe the innkeeper was just so busy, just so busy and so consumed with everyone that was in town. All the inns were full because everybody had come to do this. They had all come to do this census. So there was no room in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. So these shepherds were out in the field by themselves, and I mean, I can't imagine looking up in the clouds and seeing all these this heavenly host up in the clouds. I can't imagine. And um, then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. So I think a lot of times we just read over that all, all people. That means everyone. Jesus came. Jesus was born for everyone. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host Praising God. Now that would be so amazing to see in the clouds is this heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So Jesus came to bring peace to all men, to all mankind. Jesus came to bring peace. He is the Prince of Peace. So he came to bring peace and goodwill toward all men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. And it was told them because this was a moment of joy because they had been told, they had been prophesied. They, I mean, it's been prophesied in the Old Testament that the Messiah would come. And this is the Messiah. This is the true Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Emmanuel. Everything that they had heard was coming. They got to witness. And Mark Hall from Casting Crowns, he pointed out something really good that I hadn't thought about either. God chose. He chose the low, the shepherds. He chose the nobodies 
of the city to reveal this miraculous thing to, to reveal this miraculous birth, to show these angels to. He chose them. He didn't choose the high priest. He didn't choose some of the other people from the city or from even um, the rabbis. He chose the shepherds to show this to. So let the shepherds go and see Jesus. He chose them. You talk about the, he said the wise men too. He said the star. He said he chose something that the wise men would follow. They were astronomers. They liked to look at the sky. So they followed that star. You know, everything that God did with the birth of Jesus was intentional for his plan and purpose and to fulfill the plan and purpose that he had for Jesus. God himself stepped into the world as a baby. And I think that's amazing. That is a miraculous that all these things fit together. He chose a virgin. He told he chose a very young virgin to have this to have this baby, to have Jesus. Just a very, very awesome. It's a very awesome story. If you want to read the accounting in Matthew, I'm not going to read it. But if you want to read it on your own, it doesn't have an accounting of Jesus' birth. Matthew does. After the genealogy, so if you want to go back through and read the genealogy, I've actually um, I've actually done this with our youth girls, and I tease them. I go, "Hey, I know while we were reading those names, y'all were looking at names for your your babies that you're going to have when you're adults." I was just teasing them, but there were 42 generations between Abraham and when Jesus was born. So you can go back and you can read about that. That is in Matthew 1. And then the birth of Jesus is in Matthew 1 also. Then Matthew 2 talks about the wise men. And I'm not sure if this is in John or not. I'm going to look real quick. I'll tell you where to find it in John if so. It's not in Mark unless it is farther in, but Mark starts with uh, John the Baptist. It doesn't start with it doesn't start with Jesus' birth. John it's in John. Really, I mean, it talks about Jesus being the Word, and the Word was with God. And we actually read this the other night. Um, but it doesn't really talk about Jesus' birth either. So I guess just Matthew and Luke are the only ones that really account for Jesus' birth. And then Isaiah talks about it there. In the Old Testament about it too. But I wanted to read Luke to you. That's my favorite. If you want to watch the first chosen video, um, it was about the shepherds. And it's a great visual on that story. Matter of fact, I may watch it tonight. Okay. So, Jesus Always by Sarah Young. That's just kind of getting worn out. 
worn away. All right. Prepare your heart for the celebration of my birth. So tomorrow we will celebrate Jesus' birth. Listen to the voice of John the Baptist. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Okay, that was in uh, Mark, I think. Oh, i got to plug my computer in. I'm losing. It's telling me that my battery's in favor mode. But I have my, have my plug right here by my computer, so I can revive it. Uh, Christmas is the time to exult in my miraculous incarnation. When the Word became flesh and dwelt among you, I identified with mankind to the ultimate extent, becoming a man and taking up residence in your world. Don't let the famili familiarity of this astonishing miracle dull each effect, its effect on you. Recognize that I am the gift above all gifts and rejoice in me. Clear out clutter and open your heart by pondering the wonders of my entrance into human history. View these events from the perspective of the shepherds. Wow, this is exactly what we've been talking about. Sometimes the Holy Spirit just really blows me away when everything lines up who were keeping watch over their flocks at night. They witnessed first one angel and then a multitude of them lighting up the sky, proclaiming glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Gaze at the glory of my birth, just as the shepherds did, and respond, respond with childlike wonder. Wow, that is so good. That is so good. I love this book because this book speaks to you as if Jesus is saying it. And I just, I love it. I bought some for Christmas presents this year. I love it so much. Okay. Whoops. Okay, Mark. I like to read the verses that go with this too. Those verses that go with this. Mark 1 3. Says the voice of one crying in the wilderness. This is talking about John the Baptist. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And then Luke two thirteen through fourteen. I believe we read that already, but we'll read it again. To, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And then John 1.14. I might have read this today instead of um, us reading this on another day. I don't know. It seems like we read it another day also. 114 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then Philippians 4, 4. Uh, 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Philippians 4.4. 4. So that was... Oh, I I flip backwards. My child is in here. i got to get off of here soon. I'm going to get him fed. Finish my Christmas Eve preparations for tomorrow. But I hope that you will ponder in your heart the birth of Jesus and why Jesus came. Jesus came to save us. Jesus is the best gift ever, ever that offers us the best gift ever through salvation. And that is eternal life. Peace, joy. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All through the Holy Spirit. When we get saved through Jesus, we get the Holy Spirit that will help us with all those things. We need to try to walk in them. It's really hard. <laughs> but we need to try. What kind of... Uh... Kind of salvation message do we want to use now? I don't have anything about Christmas really. Or a salvation message. So let's just do this. Steps to peace with God. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He brought peace and goodwill to all men. So this is a good news track. Most people have an idea of what they believe it will take to be accepted by God. After all, who likes the idea of exiting this life without being on good terms with him? Thankfully, it's possible to be certain that you've made peace with God but the way must be chosen during this life. Here are the steps drawn from God's book, the Bible. Step one, understand God's purposes, peace, and eternal life. God loves you and wants you to experience peace and eternal fulfilling life. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10.10 10. Are you talking to the cat? Why don't most people have this peace in and the fulfilling, abundant life that God intended for us to have. So step two, admit the problem, our sin and separation. God did not create us like robots to automatically love and mechanically obey him. God gave us a will and the freedom to choose. The first man and woman chose to disobey God and go their own willful way and we still make that choice today. This results in separation from God. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. For the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. People have tried many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Proverbs 14, 12. Your iniquities have made a separation between you and God and your God. Isaiah 59, 2. No bridge reaches God except one. So step three. <clears throat> Excuse me. Discover God's bridge, the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. Though he was God's sinless son, he became a human, took our place, and paid the penalty for our sin, bridging the gap between God and us. 
The Bible says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2.5 Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.18 God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5, 8 and Romans 6, 23. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. God has provided the only way to forgiveness of sin and eternal life, but each person must make a choice. So step four, embrace the truth. <coughs> Excuse me. Receive Christ. <coughs> I'm sorry. Receive Christ. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive Him by personal choice. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. And he with me. Revelation 3.20 I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. The Bible says to all, all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. <clears throat> Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. John three thirty six. So what is your decision? Will you receive Jesus Christ right now and trust in him alone for forgiveness and eternal life? The Bible says that's the only way to find peace with God. Admit your need that you are a sinner in need of God's forgiveness. Be willing to turn from, your, from trusting in anything else for eternal life and trust only in Christ. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, came back to life from the grave, and is your only way to heaven. Accept Jesus' offer to forgive your sins and come into your life as your Savior. You may want to tell him in words like these. So this is a prayer. And if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior, if you would like to accept salvation through the best gift ever, that he offers the best gift ever for us, which is eternal life, then repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I believe that when you died, you were paying the penalty for my sins. I now receive you into my life as my Savior so I can have forgiveness and never-ending life from God. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if you said that prayer, if you accepted Jesus as your Savior, if you accepted the gift that he has to offer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life and the rejoicing that the angels were doing the night that Jesus was born is happening right now. They are rejoicing in heaven. And your name is, you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his son. 
And if you want to draw closer to God in your relationship, your new relationship, then read God's word and start in Matthew. Learn who Jesus is. See who Jesus is. See who you just accepted as your Savior. See the love, the compassion, the humility that Jesus had, the miracles that Jesus performed. Enjoy your Christianity journey. All right, well, my throat is not doing real good tonight. So I'm going to get off of here. I got to get my munchkin something to eat. Well, our son really, really, I mean, he is not doesn't realize the excitement of Christmas. He does know how to open presents. He has learned how to do that, so that's a good thing. That's a plus. Um, I'm here in the office with me, and I have all these wrapped presents in here. He, he could care less. He wants me to go change the TV for him. That's, that's his reason why he's in here. So let me give you God's blessing. Let me get off of here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You know, Jesus is the source of our peace. When we have Jesus, we have peace. When we're in a storm, we still have a peace that we're not in that storm by ourselves. We have Jesus. So I hope that you have an awesome rest of your Christmas Eve. And that you have an awesome Christmas Day tomorrow. I may or may not be here tomorrow night. Um, I am going to see family tomorrow. And going to have Christmas with my grandkids and my older kids. So... I don't know what time I'll be home. Probably before dark, because I don't really like driving at night anymore. So, anyway, uh, Merry Christmas. Remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. He is the best gift ever given, and he has the best gift for us, which is eternal life through salvation in him. So, um, if you did get saved, please put your name in the comments so I can pray for you. And uh, if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. Uh, I'm doing this on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. And I uh, always have a trivia question, too. I've added a trivia question, so there will be a trivia question on here you want to answer that I'm gonna do some kind of giveaway for trivia questions but I really have not figured out what I'm gonna do I got me a better camera I hope it's a better camera for my computer and I got me a ring light so I'm hoping that the quality of my videos might be a little bit better soon <laughs> especially this camera that I use through my computer, it's horrible. Even though I upgraded from, I upgraded my UCAM 9, and I don't think it's any better. Maybe the quality of the picture might be better, but the camera is lagging. So I don't know. I don't know. All right, well, I got to get off of here. I could talk to myself all night, I guess, but I need to get off of here. I have things that I need to do. So, uh, much love. Well, let me pray for us. God, just please be with us and bless us with a good night. Just pray for all the people that come and watch this, God, that you would bless their families abundantly, that you would Protect them, provide for them, God, and, and just lead and guide them. And I just pray that you would give us the boldness to just go forward, sharing your truths and sharing the gospel of Jesus, no matter where we go, no matter where we 
are. And that God, we would just, um, that you would just use us in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, much love, much love and cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.